Patricia, first, uh, let's kind of talk about where you were when we spoke to you last for the for the blog post, which was quite a while ago now, wasn't it? It was like a couple. Yeah, for the newsletter or. Um, well, I'm looking at the blog post that we wrote, and I um, or I guess Aaron did the interview with you for that. Yes. And that was yeah, that was almost two years ago. I know time exactly. goes so quickly. Time um, really goes fly. Yeah, it goes very very quickly, and uh, life has been very full, so that's a good thing. But uh, yes, at the last uh, interview, I was talking about um, publishing my capstone research paper and still have full intention on doing that, edited it, it was ready to go. And then quite frankly, part of it was being uncertain because it was my first published journal article, which journal should be the right fit. And life started shifting at that point for me. So uh, work-wise, professionally, and where I was heading. Um, so part of the reason why I didn't publish it is because I was not necessarily going into the academic sector. Um, and my focus shifted a little bit. If I'm going to be using that research for my own published work or um, an online course or workshops that I'm then charging for, for my um, professionally for, for myself as an entrepreneur and, and business owner, it shifted the focus on if I publish that, that um, information on in a journal, then they would own it. And if I was then charging for that uh, intellectual property, it's one thing to quote yourself in another, you know, a peer reviewed journal it, it's another thing if I'm going to be charging for an online course or a workshop and it's that is the majority of the material. And I did, wasn't able to take the time to pull it apart to see if there was a section that I then wouldn't use for my own business and, and still publish journal or self-publish. And so I'm at that point right now where I still have full intentions. It's fantastic research and material. Um, but will I self-publish it or how will I go forward with that publishing piece? Wow, that's so interesting. So can you talk a little bit about what this capstone paper was about, Patricia? Because it sounds like this makes up a lot of kind of the foundation of your business as well. So if you can talk a little bit about the content of that, I think that would be really interesting. Yeah. Um, well, my, my business looks at a few different topics, um, inspiring leadership uh, in their man people management or other types of leadership roles, uh, being intentionally brave is another course that I have and train the trainer. The capstone project was looking at a cl collaborative partnerships and in particular intersectorial or inter um, department. Um, so part of in a leadership role, and especially I've been part of a lot of intersectoral networks over the years, partnerships are a huge part of working collaboratively, whether it's on a complex project or pro, um, social or community problem. So part of the leadership role is to know how to work with other organizations. And it what isn't always something that comes naturally. So it's not the whole basis of my, my business, but it's definitely a part of it and will be um, an important course that I offer and then publish work. It could, uh, part of my work is to be a keynote speaker, whether it's at a conference or an employee retreat um, and offering workshops and um, workplace training, consulting, different things like that, as well as the online courses. So I do a bit of a mix, um, all kind of supporting each other uh, in these different pieces. So the collaborative partnerships where my capstone um, was based on, it's a piece of my work, but it's not the, the whole foundation. But it did lead me into thinking of how I'm going to use that intellectual property in a different way that still works for me uh, for the purpose of where my life was heading. So. Wonderful. Isn't it interesting how, you know, we think we're kind of going in one direction and then we get inspired or, you know, kind of triggered or, or you know, we pick up different pieces and it kind of sends us off. Uh, yes, a little definitely. Bit. Definitely. Yeah. And it's always, I think it's important, you know, to be open to those sort of to following some of those different um, 
podcasts. Whatever. Yeah, absolutely. The, the journey, it's been interesting, uh, you know, initially taking that leap to go back to school while I was working full time, going back to school full time and then family and life and everything happened uh, during those couple years of being in school. But it fueled in me that um, love for knowledge that I always had lifelong learning. Um, and it's just started, I, I started growing in a different way. Um, even the book from, and I just sent a, a quote out uh, through Instagram from uh, Ellen Lyle. Am I saying wow. her name right? I loved this book. And it's interesting when I went back to pull a quote out uh, to reference her, I realized that that book was part of, it was an integral part of where I was at that point with something else that was happening in our family life while I was going back to school at Yorkville. And it kind of started setting me on a bit of a path, um, you know, personal journey. And then, so that leap of going back to school, continuing my professional job as a director at an agency, but then, you know, things just kept brewing and growing. And then about a year and a half ago, uh, I left my job um, to, and didn't know where I was going to land, uh, which was a huge job too, because I would never typically leave a job before having a job lined up, but it just was a fit to where my path was taking me. Um, and then going to Europe for three weeks, that came about, I'd always want to travel to Europe and do solo traveling, staying in hostels, backpacking. It was amazing. Such a fantastic way to change, again, major chapters in my life. Um, and then when I came back, this dream of always, you know, having my own business, creating um, and designing educational materials and providing that whether at, as a speaker or online or, or, you know, in different capacities that just really developed for myself because I do want to publish multiple works. Uh, so that then again, it was a, just sort of a different turn, but on that, this journey and just being open to, to what's coming. Sometimes um, one of the things I talk about in the intentionally brave course is, you know, we get comfortable even if we're not happy. Uh, you know, we're comfortable with where we're at and to take that intentionally brave leap to follow a dream, uh, you know, it's pretty exciting. But, uh, you know, then when people kept saying, oh, you're so brave, especially traveling by myself, um, you know, it, that was interesting to me. So I researched that some more and explored that some more and it turned into a workshop and then now um, a six to eight week online course. So it's been an incredible journey. There's still so much I want to do, uh, but I can't do it all at once. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> so, that's so great. So it's, it sort of sounds a little bit like going to Yorkville was kind of a catalyst for kind of cracking you open and you know, being able to see all of these different opportunities and, you know, possible pathways that you have. Yes, definitely. It, um, what I learned at Yorkville with my Master of Adult Education really fuels my work and informs my work and just adds to it. Um, you know, the over 20 years of experience combined with fantastic education just really helps me uh, open up more doors and opportunities. That's so, so exciting. And I think, you know, the fact that you have sort of launched this entrepreneurial um, endeavor is, is something that other people are really going to resonate with because I know so many people who are interested in starting their own businesses, but, you know, feel afraid. So that's where your intentionally brave uh, piece comes into, I'm sure. Um, so can you talk a little bit more specifically about kind of how your business, like what your business really sort of looks like. You've mentioned these online programs, you've mentioned, um, you know, motivational public speaking. Um, can you get a little bit more into kind of the, these different pieces and how they fit together and how you came to kind of devise this, this the, the format of this business? Right. Well, um, the consulting and being a speaker at workplaces, conferences, or employee retreats, uh, that's something that I've been doing for 20 years, creating content and offering, whether it's interactive workshops and learning um, opportunities and events, or being a public speaker, and whether it's a keynote or 
you know, another um, opportunity. So that's been something, a platform that I've always been doing uh, and always had the dream to also develop online courses. And I think part of that grew with seeing how accessible Yorkville was and how fantastic that even an online community can be really a community. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a fantastic way that I learned through that platform, knowing that everybody in the workplace, especially my background's nonprofit uh, and the community sector, not everybody necessarily will go back to school for a full master's or another degree, but they're needing some learning. Uh, so, I, uh, you know, I'm not replicating what, what Yorkville uh, does, but I wanted to give them some sort of opportunity with accessible learning when they could do it at a self-paced way. Um, certainly in-person is always better, but I try to offer those in-person opportunities just like we're, we're talking right now on Zoom um, and have some of that interactive live video piece if we're not in-person, face-to-face uh, -face, um, at the same location. But just to, to offer that, to continue to grow, because I'm a firm believer in that lifelong learning. And webinars and other things online are great, and I will include those as well. Uh, you know, webinars, uh, you know, as free opportunities for snapshots of, of learning. But to just offer them something a little bit bigger, more, more comprehensive, not like a full online uh, course at Yorkville, but uh, sort of mini courses in, in that capacity that is accessible because everybody's learning isn't that academic way with textbooks as I love, but um, they still want to grow and learn um, in their own ways. So I have the online courses, the keynote speaking, um, creating and leading workshops, and I definitely, another piece is going to be that publishing books and, and other resources as well. So it's a whole package and a variety of platforms for income and for just uh, that I end the whole package when people want to hire me for a conference. Great. And, and multiple ways of, of yeah, sharing your information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even through social media uh, and blogs. And now I, I have been doing the YouTube videos, um, some more tutorial learning topics. Just the last couple of weeks, I have started with vlogs, which is a different way of putting myself out there. So it's not a scripted where I sort of have a lesson plan. This is just me talking. So I've called it Trish Talks. Um, it's on the Leaders Inspired YouTube channel. And uh, so sometimes it's talking about being intentionally brave, um, which is a big theme for me, but it's also leadership topics, self-care, just this journey of being an entrepreneur. So it, that's been interesting too, um, just to hit record. And one of the vlogs coming up in the next few weeks, I hit record and then I didn't even have a topic in my head. <laughs> it just started talking. Um, so it's really putting myself terrifying. out there. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so scary, but I can also see how that would be, you know, really great practice for your public speaking work and, you know, because it kind of helps to introduce an element of spontaneity, I'm sure. It yes. Yes, just going for it. Um, and, and I think a big part of being an entrepreneur, or anything that we're doing to really grow and learn and expand, because there's so much learning about this, whether it's editing a video, uploading it, adding the elements, if the sound's not right, there's been ongoing learning uh, beyond what I already know and do. I'm continually growing. Um, and I think a big part of growth is being vulnerable and putting myself out there outside of my comfort zone. So that's a piece of what I talk about in Intentionally Brave uh, as well, is, is just expanding and stretching that comfort zone. Um, I have to expand going live on whether it's Instagram or Facebook and uh, you know even just the recording myself. I have no problems talking even in front of a thousand people live, but all of a sudden those first few times of clicking record and you know, feeling like I'm stumbling over my words more than I would in person with people. Uh, it's been an interesting growth as well. Yes, different elements of public speaking. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, that's, that's so great. Wow. That's very exciting. Um, so are you, um, are you sort of using exi your existing networks to market your material? Like I'm sure through your work, you have lots of kind of contacts. Like, is that one of the main sort of sources of, of how you get your, your name out there? Are you kind of doing a lot of, you know, just social media advertising and stuff like that? What, how are you approaching your marketing efforts? Uh, that's a great a question and aspect of uh, this business. I'm used to doing nonprofit marketing, even for information sharing and, and promotion of free programs, a lot of times on a low cost, no cost basis. So having that background, I had some of that insight, but it's been completely different marketing and promoting myself as a brand than another program or organization. It's, it's been a bit of a shift. And what I found, um, because I was pulling back from the nonprofit work and networks I was part of, I was part of a lot of leadership roles, um, in particular working with seniors and um, just that community sector health promotion piece. I had to pull back from those networks, which was really nerve wracking for me. Um, in one of my vlogs recently, I even talk about being a leader and then stepping away from the team I was leading. Um, and just that shift in my identity was a really fascinating process. So I felt I needed to pull away, which was a risk um, because I was pulling myself out of all of this work I was doing, all those collaborative partnerships that I was already part of, uh, to focus on myself and my business and grow some of those pieces not being busy or divided by what I used to do. So I still need to reconnect with some of those networks. I am in contact with people. Um, I still have a fantastic reputation with them, but I really had to shift and learn in, uh, to promote you know, online platforms. This last month, I really focused on Instagram. Haven't done a lot with paid ads yet, um, there's other platforms like Eventbrite. If I'm doing a, a, a public workshop in the community that I can promote through, but I still have pieces to learn and grow this promotion part of me to bring in, um, the income and work in a different way. Um, and I think part of it was needing to really solidify and grow some of these pieces like an online course being finished. I want to publish um, and sort of have products to offer beyond just here I can talk about anything. You know, I had to solidify what, who am I, what are my platforms, what is my new identity, uh, and what are the topics. Um, so I've picked a few uh, and I, you know, some of the courses will grow out of that and then developing keynote, uh, keynotes, opportunities, webinars on those topics. So the, the marketing piece still has to grow for me. Um, and, and I'm still learning and growing through that, that aspects of, of having a business. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's, yeah, that's a big, a big part of it for sure. Um, you've sort of alluded to this a little bit, Patricia, we started off our conversation talking about your capstone paper, which you had intended to publish and, and now you're kind of reworking it and, and, um, might be modifying it. Uh, it sounds to me like you have maybe a, 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 a few books up your <laughs> sleeve. Um, is there something kind of, are you, do you have a particular project in terms of, of publishing words that you're thinking of right now? Um, and can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Like I, I'm somewhat familiar with, with kind of the, you know, creating products for, for an online platform. And uh, I know a lot of what a lot of people do is like, like you, they'll have sort of, um, you know, a particular theme that they work on um, and they'll have, you know, courses around that theme, but then also books. Um, where do you see your business in, in like three years? Um, are, are there any particular kind of goals that you'd like to reach or products that you'd like to have released? What, what does that look like for you? Well, in three years, I will definitely have multiple courses launched, um, be speakers at conferences, uh, keynote. Um, I will be joining some associations this next year, the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers I want to join. Uh, and I would have to look at agent, like there's a whole world there that I haven't fully tapped into. And I knew 
when I jump in, I need to be all in. So I need to be ready and sort of figure out this new identity for myself. Uh, so books, um, I do have a couple books in mind and maybe a smaller work initially would be the, the collaborative partnerships, uh, capstone, whether it's a booklet, um, and, uh, in resource, um, the intentionally brave, uh, course, and there's so many elements to that. Even this summer, three huge things happened in my personal life. Um, and I, it will definitely be at least one chapter called three big moves. Um, and, uh, I talk about a little bit, little bits of that, um, in different ways through my course or the vlogs I've hinted at, you know, a few pieces, but, um, so that definitely is a book brewing inside of me. Uh, and I really just need to sit down and just type. Um, and then the whole leaders inspired piece, whether it's different, uh, you know, a booklet about train the trainer, um, different, uh, learning strengths that people have. Everybody doesn't automatically in, um, instill variety into their workplace training and uh, making sure that they inspire those in the room. Um, going, you know, sort of on the multiple intelligences, but I need to explore when it comes to publishing, referencing is easy in an academic paper. And I'm not sure when I publish for profit, how that works for contact, can, you know, contacting people um, to reference their work, like that's a whole other world that I would need to connect with a publisher and they would need to inform me on uh, what's okay because I'm really sensitive to respect other people's intellectual property. And it's an interesting thing because we know so many things. Can we reference every single thing that we know? And then what's our, what's our own knowledge? Uh, what do we have to offer then that's unique? So that whole process needs to happen for me um, a little bit more. And I don't well, know. So interesting. It really sounds like you're kind of almost, I mean, uh, it's, you've clearly gone through sort of multiple transitions over the years, but uh, the past couple of years just since being at Yorkville. But I can also sort of see that it seems like you're kind of looking at ways of uh, translating a lot of this very intellectual academic material for more of a consumer audience. Um, yes. Sounds, sounds like that, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I mean, just in regards to your capstone paper too, like obviously that was written in a very academic tone, but I can see too how that topic could be, um, you know, kind of modified to really, I know that there's a lot of negative connotations around the whole kind of like personal and professional development, self-help sort of space, but but I could see how that topic could actually really fit wonderfully in there, sort of straddling these two worlds and presenting these ideas, you know, in an intellectual way, but that's very accessible as well. So, yeah. Yeah, it's balancing that. In particular for the collaborative partnerships, what launched me into that topic was my professional work. Um, so I was part of some collaborative interagency funded programs some were extremely successful. And then I would witness some other interagency projects hitting road blump, uh, roadblocks. And so part of my research was, well, what makes it one successful and one not successful or hit these real struggles and making it not set up for success? Um, so the research was prompted by my professional work and um, to then... Um, run surveys and interviews as well as doing the academic um, research itself uh, and with a literature review. So it all came together and definitely my professional experience informed some of the direction and then the research then informed what was created for helping other professionals in those projects um, and beyond just following a model what were the actual aspects that people needed to learn um, for working with other people even leading um, an interagency meeting uh, things that people assumed you can just jump in and do but it would not always work for everybody they didn't necessarily have those natural skills or needed some skills um, skill development uh, 
that answers a bit of that as well for how it all kind of came together. For sure. Yeah. And I can see how, you know, all the various products that you're working on would be applicable um, for, you know, institutional or in organizational kind of bodies, but then also for individuals as well who are looking yes. to you know, just build up skills in, in terms of, yeah. Oh, that's so mm-hmm. exciting. Patricia. Yeah. So, um, so let's say uh, we're, you know, on a spaceship to the future. It's five years from now. Uh, and you're just having like the perfect day in your business. What does that look like? What, what's your ideal day five years from now in this amazing business you've created? <laughs> well, ideal five years from now, um, or even well before that, <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> is making a decent income. Because part of taking the jump from a regular paycheck is really trusting that it takes time to grow this and that it will be you know, fantastic. Um, so ideally in five years, my husband is able to not work because we have a uh, big enough income from this and that we can travel and that I can even do some of this work uh, from anywhere. So part of my initial drive and, and seeds for wanting to partly go online with the online courses and having different revenue streams is to be able to be mobile. Um, so definitely five years from now, our our kids will be off doing their own thing, whether it's finishing school or already working, um, like post-secondary school. And uh, I just want us to be able to have more freedom. So definitely there's some some big goals. And I find, you know, whether it's a small goal or a big goal, like a small goal, the month of September, I wanted to, I was around 100 followers on Instagram. And I, I just picked, okay, I want to get to 500 by the end of that this month. And I was able to reach that goal, which was amazing. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's little pieces that doesn't necessarily translate into an income right now. Uh, but the more people I can reach and impact and show value to um, and inspire with quotes and, and pictures and, and different things, whether it's through my vlogs the, the larger audience, the more people then that I could tap into that may be interested in then purchasing a course or, um, you know, then translating into an income. But definitely part of this business is adding value for free that people even come to trust and know me. Uh, and that's part of the vlogs as well. And I have blogs and, and different things. So it's a lot of work for not translating into an income right now, but it has to build. Uh, and so it's an interesting journey and it definitely takes a lot of belief and confidence in myself and just faith that this, this business will be what I dream. It just doesn't happen overnight. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, so Patricia, let's, um, time travel again uh, to the past. When you first enrolled at York Bell, was this business idea that you are working on right now part of your vision at that time um or were you just sort of like what was where where was what was your mind where were you when you first enrolled and what what were you envisioning for yourself at that point i think it was always a seed um there you know it was the dream of knowing especially being in the nonprofit sector and the way incomes are different and retirement savings are different now I always thought I'm going to need to think of long-term working through retirement years. So whether that's part-time working at a college or, um, or having online courses, that was always a seat in the back of my mind when I decided to go to Yorkville and decided to get a master of education. I loved uh, training in the workplace and creating educational content and uh, always had a high value on really fantastic training. Um, So when I went to Yorkville, part of it was a master's would give me opportunities for other director, executive director, other roles in other organizations. With um, having a BA in psychology, uh, I thought a master's would give me other opportunities and just kind of grow and um, back up my experience that I had gained as well. So it was a combination of workplace opportunities. I didn't think I would start a business right away. 
I, uh, or at least not at this time, when my kids were getting ready for going back to, or going to university or college and finishing high school, I was not thinking that's the perfect time to start a business and drop one income. <laughs> but it just all happened and it, it's making sense. Uh, so the business was more probably 20 years down the road, not right now, but it's, it's actually makes sense because it takes a little bit of time to grow it to that point. And then we'd really have the flexibility, um, you know, a little bit sooner is the ideal plan. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, that's so exciting. It's, uh, well, I mean, just, you know, I've been at Yorkville for, oh gosh, I think two years, two and a half years now. And, you know, I've, I've watched you kind of grow in your business and, you know, I see your posts on Facebook and it's just, it's really exciting. And I love to share your stuff with our alumni network too. So, so thank, thank you. you for all of your, all of your great, uh, great work and insight. And I can see too how, you know, your expertise in this area of education and, you know, professional growth, could pro pro you know is relevant for a lot of our alumni as well so i think that's also another you know powerful way that you know, we can share in, in these groups so thank so, you yeah. i appreciate that oh it's wonderful well this is fantastic Richard. thank you thank you so much for your time i love being part of the yorkville community and so awesome. it's always nice to see and talk to you really nice to see you. i hope you have a great day you too you too take good care thank Thanks, you, you too. bye, bye.